So hi, Sarah, how are you doing? I'm doing great, how are you? Good, how's your quarantine been going? Oh, well, um, I have a, a seven-year-old homeschooling, uh, a movie to promote, and a husband who works, so I think like, like many working moms, it's been uh, interesting. How about you? <laughs> oh my goodness, how's the homeschooling going? Uh, interesting. <laughs> you know, he's young, he's um, in first grade, and so, you know, the only time that they're with teachers tends to be about two hours a day. So it, it's difficult because he's by himself. And like, obviously, we have to monitor that while working. So it's become right. a new juggling act. Goodness. So for those that don't know, those who have not seen the film, tell them what it's about and who you play. Yeah, so A Call to Spy is basically the hidden figures of the spy world. It's the first film on three real legendary spies in Churchill's secret army. And in the film, I play one of those spies, Virginia Hall, who was the um, first woman to work for the CIA after the war. And during the war, she was the spy the Nazis dubbed the most dangerous of all Allied spies. Yeah. So I know you spoke to her family. They sent you some artifacts, some photos. So tell me about um, the whole process, the research process, and how you came to really embody and get to know Virginia. Yeah, the research process to play Virginia Paul was incredible. I had her spy files and so even her words in kind of letters and spy reports that she wrote back to London. Um, and then I also did speak with her living relatives to try and get a sense of her, um, you know, being better than you can from a spy file. Because one of the things about being a spy is you don't talk about it. So, you know, she didn't give any interviews after the war. And, and there are certain things that, you know, she took to her grave. So for me, it was about finding, you know, the core of her personality through the research and then bringing myself to it. Mm -hmm. And I imagine as an actress, it's quite a tough role to play because it's a lot of it's nonverbal. Um, you have to portray her slight limp. Um, you have to portray her steeliness, her bravery. And again, a lot of that is nonverbal. Um, so tell me how you came to embody her as an actress. Totally. I mean, Virginia was definitely the hardest character I've ever played because of all the reasons you just said. She was a leader. There was a quiet strength. She was a doer. She wasn't someone who necessarily is going to give these articulate actor speeches. It was all in the quiet moments. And then, as you mentioned, she had a wooden leg. So she wasn't born with it. She had a freak hunting accident when she was 27 in Turkey and shot her own leg off with her father's shotgun while hunting. Um, almost died and then had a, a renewed passion for a calling of duty when she did live um, for the rest of her life. And so as an actress, to portray that limp, which some people said wasn't a limp at all, and then other people said, you know, she's the limping lady, quote unquote, I had to find a middle ground that felt appropriate and also wear all kinds of uncomfortable contractions on, on my real leg. And tell me about filming in uh, Philly and in Budapest. It was amazing. We had a great shoot. So we shot kind of London and Scotland and parts of France in Philly, which is my hometown. Um, I bring all my films here. Great community. Uh, we actually shot in the home of the family that inspired the Philadelphia story, which is a cool little piece of history. And then we went to Budapest to pair with that kind of the wide exteriors, the Nazis marching in shots, the architecture of Budapest really matched. 1941, 1942, France. And I'd never been to Budapest, but it's just an incredible place. Um, and we work with Pioneer Pictures, a female run production company there. It was amazing. Yeah. So tell me why that it's important to you to work with a female led production company. Yeah, this, you know, everybody knows now, I think that the statistics on women in film are pretty terrible. <laughs> you know, um, female writers, producers, directors, composers, they're, they're the minority still. Um, and I think this is a female driven story and it was really important to me to hire a female director and then also, you know, have a lot of women in key positions behind the camera and a few good men. Like we have a male editor uh, who's amazing. And I think it's also important to have that male eye to balance it out for sure. But it's, it's really about finding the equality there. 
Oh, and so tell me about the casting process as a producer. Um, how did you come to finding your newer, finding your um, stonic attic? So uh, we had a great casting director, Heidi Levitt, but with there's fun stories with Noor and Stana and specifically Noor was my first choice for the role. I'd seen a small indie called Parched that played at Tribeca Film Festival and was actually interviewing the director for the job. Uh, you know, but yeah, and she went on and on about how great Radhika was and her schedule didn't really work out to be in the mix in the end, the director. But I brought Radhika to Lydia, our director, and she had also given Radhika an award at Tribeca. So she knew Radhika. So we both were like, yes. And we presented the offer and we got her, which is so rare um, to get your first choice in indie film. And uh, she said yes, which is great. She's huge in India, and this is actually her American film debut, but I'm sure she's going to be huge in here in America very, very shortly. Um, and with Stana, she and I share an entertainment lawyer, and my entertainment lawyer pitched her <laughs> to me, <laughs> um, and that's how Stana Kadic came to be. But then with most of the cast, you know, Heidi, Heidi brought them to us, like Rossif Sutherland, I was not familiar with him. He's now one of my favorite actors of all time. Such a nice guy, just saw a tape from Heidi. And I was like, that's Dr. Chavan. Um, so that happened a lot. I loved all the Canadians. <laughs> Canada's the best, right? I love Canada. <laughs> So tell me what you learned in your research that maybe you couldn't fit in the film that you just, you want to share. Oh, what a great question. Um, I don't think it was one specific incident that I learned that, you know, that it didn't make it in. I think it was more the global of how many women, there were 39 in France, for spies, how many spies in general there were for this secret army of Churchills, and how each of them have the most fascinating stories, you know, like one was a cook, one was a mom. Like they have all these different stories that would make for a lot of great film. Oh. And uh, as a producer, is there a moment that you're most proud of having accomplished? Yeah, so that would be the Pyrenees Mountains. So um, historically, Virginia hiked over the Pyrenees Mountains into Spain to escape Klaus Barbie and the Nazis like chasing her with a wooden leg in the middle of winter. No idea how she did that, <laughs> but she did. And we are an indie film. We couldn't fly to the Pyrenees and shoot. So we were actually in prep and it was March and there was a snowfall and we were like, oh my gosh, you know, there's probably not going to be any snow in April. We got to go. So we literally like, that weekend, packed up, had a skeleton crew, went to upstate New York in like three inches of snow because some of it had melted and shot the entire Pyrenees mountain sequence um, and then had some special effects, uh, which were brilliant, put in. And so I'm really proud that that worked because in shooting it, I really wasn't so sure. <laughs> Aww. Do you have a favorite memory from sets or downtime from filming? Downtime? You know... We had a great fun cast night in Budapest. We, we locked all of Philly. It was towards the end of the Budapest shoot and we had the next day off and we all went clubbing, which I'm not really like uh, someone, like a clubber, so to speak. But um, we went, like the wine bars there are, are open very late. And then they have this club in a, um, they're like in these beautiful architectural buildings that are historic. So it's not like you're clubbing in New York or whatever, you're, you're in this amazing place. And we all um, went dancing and drank wine and that was a lot of fun for the downtime. Yeah, yeah. And then for filming, do you have a favorite moment? For filming, oh, so many favorite moments. Um, I loved filming the Lysander. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we actually, that was actually shot in Budapest there we lost the Lysander we were going to shoot with in in Philadelphia that was going to be flown from Canada because they sold it so we had to punt it to Budapest and they don't have Lysanders so they taped a yellow plane that was a single engine to look like a Lysander and then like circled it around and it was just a cool moment of indie film of how things can fall apart and then come back together in a in a perfect way <laughs> And I know you, uh, you have plans to direct your next project. Can you talk a little about that? Yeah, I'm really interested. I, it may or may not be the next thing I do. I, I certainly love acting and I love writing and I love producing. 
Um, but I feel like since I've taken, you know, three films through from start to finish through marketing, that directing is kind of the next step. Um, but it very much needs to be something that I uh, connect to on a, on a personal level and feel like, you know, it's appropriate for me to take the directing realm. Mm -hmm. And I know it's very important to you to bring this film to an educational setting, but you showed it at a college. And it's uh, you want it as a tool for education. So can you talk a little about that? Yeah, I think it's really important that girl, young girls and boys know about these women's stories and other heroic stories. People who, for whatever reason, aren't in our history books, aren't taught, and should be. And so what was really important to me in the making of the film was to try and get a PG-13 rating, which we did get. We were lucky enough to get in terms of balancing kind of the violence and everything so that we could get that rating. Most World War II films tend to be R. And I, again, wanted to have a younger generation of girls see these real and diverse heroes each of whom had to overcome discrimination, whether it was the wooden leg or for being a Muslim or for being Jewish, they all were discriminated against to become um, huge heroes. Uh, and I thought that that was a story that we could use right now in, in the educational setting. Mm -hmm. Have you shown the film to Virginia's family? So they know about it and they're going to the movie theater I think this week in Baltimore and I'm really nervous so um they're very excited and you know I guess I'll I guess I'll hear what they think but um their endorsement would probably be the best best endorsement I could ha I could get for the film and what have you seen lately that you've really liked you know <laughs> to be really honest I haven't seen anything for months <laughs> I've been so busy with this film and, um, you know, I, I have a newborn baby and a uh, life. So it's been nuts, but um, yeah, I really haven't watched any TV and I love it. I just really haven't watched anything in a couple months. Yeah, that's fair. So are there any people that you'd still like to work with in the future? Oh, so many uh, people I'd love. I want to work with Catherine Hardick. I love, um, you know, Catherine Bigelow, uh, you know, I'd like to work with Steven Spielberg. There's just um, Aaron Sorkin. There's so many people I'd love to work with who, who gravitate towards this kind of um, intelligent, character-driven uh, content. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't wait to see what you do next. And congratulations on your family, everything you've accomplished. Um, thank you for your art. Thank, thank you. you. So much. <laughs> Have a great day. Yeah, okay, you too. Bye.